for the 10. Oh my, misses the 10 pin completely. We're bowling in Erie on the TV show, the semifinal match. I believe the way that everything would start, Bob would start with a strike, I would get up and throw a double and then sit back down on the bench. Bob, the next frame, the second frame, would get up and roll his shot. Well, I went up and I left the 10 pin. Of course, I, I threw a better shot than, than Parker did the prior shot, but I left the 10 pin. And uh, better as shot. I was going up for my spare, I heard a bottle crinkle in the back. Was it? Oh, wait, that's no, a different story. What happened was a guy stood you up from the crowd to say that. down lane and I missed the spare. Start over. Your turn. You no. gave it to me. Okay. Then that means it's my story at that point. Is that, is that what it is? Yeah, you don't get this running with it. There's two you know, you can only take someone's fame so long, so I got the five seconds now. Proceed. After you. I say so just left the 10 pin on the screen. So I left the 10 pin, and I go to throw it, and now this is the first week they have people sitting up the lane. And at the end of that line of people that were sitting, the gentleman stands up and decides to peek over the edge of the lane to kind of see, because he couldn't see the 10 pin from where he was sitting, right in the middle of my approach. I flinched just enough to miss it. And then I turned around in disbelief. And the cool thing is, I didn't have to say anything. Uh, Parker. I, I did. I thought it was a young lady that stood up. But either way, it was someone, one of the spectators, had stood up in the middle of his approach. Clearly, no question, caught you right then and there. It's just like a mulligan almost. If he had made it, he didn't have to call interference. Let's say it again had nothing to do with us being in Erie, Pennsylvania, or that Bob Learn, coincidentally, is from Erie, PA. It had to do as a professional bowler trying to get a shot off his hand, and at that moment in time, the, one of the few times at that time that we had people sitting down lanes, the initial time, and I really felt from my heart an unjust was served by this person standing up, so I felt like the only right decision is for him to shoot it over. And to be clear, the PBA rules at that time were if there was a distraction that caused uh, inf interference with your shot, you could get it over. Bob Wern's a very conscientious guy, and he would have never called interference if indeed he truly wasn't interfered with. So. That happened every week on tour. Mm -hmm. uh, if a flag fell or pins crumbled on adjacent lane, right. uh, you'd get shots over. So it wasn't anything that didn't happen on a regular basis, but it was the first time and only time on TV <laughs> And uh, it almost ruined uh, what ended up being pretty close to a perfect day for me. Uh, and, you know, thank God uh, we got someone that uh, is nice enough to say, you know what, you know, what's right is right. And uh, she get that shot over. Uh, and as it turns out, he finishes that game for 279, and I had to strike out the 10th for 280. So sure enough, I got the 3 to 10th to beat him by a pin. And if he makes the call, or doesn't make the call, I should say, uh, He's a winner, and I'm, uh, I'm holding my head for the rest of the it ruined day. My, it ruined my perfect day, but that's okay. It was still the right call, and if I had to make the same decision again, to be honest, it wouldn't matter who I'm bowling against. The decision would be made the same, so. Thanks, Bill. Well going.